Old theaters have always had a certain romantic pull on people, it seems. The Strand, the Liberty in Eunice, there used to be the Paramount in Baton Rouge. And if you hang around stage doors long enough, you're bound to meet some interesting people. That's a big trunk. Well, they don't make them this big anymore, but my bass fiddle fits in here, Jeff, and that's the reason I like to have it, where my bass fiddle slide inside. And uh, it don't have the computers in it, and, but it fits in perfect. Put the guitar in the trunk and have my bass. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Tillman Franks knows country music. In fact, he's known some of the biggest names in country music personally. This is like a country music shrine here. Really? Every time I come to this old auditorium, it brings back so many dear memories to me. A lot of it's interesting folks have come through here. Elvis and Hank and Johnny Cash and Johnny Horton and uh, Jim Rees and just name them on and on. Webb Pierce, Farron Young, Didn't you wreck Slim Whitman. Car? Tillman played with the greatest stars of country music. That's him with Johnny Horton and just behind the young king of rock and roll. And by the way, Hank's wearing Tillman's suit. Tonight he'll play the hayride again with the same enthusiasm he did more than 30 years ago. It's going to really be a, a good show and we're going to have lots of fun here tonight. I'm going to slap that old bass fiddle out there on the stage tonight. It's really going to be fun, Jeff. Pure country. Pure country, boy, like we used to. Uh -huh. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. This building knows country music. It sheltered some of the biggest names of all. Yet most of the time it stands empty. And the tears that I cried for that woman are gonna flood you, big river. And I'm gonna sit right here until I die. Johnny Cash, Johnny Horton, Slim Whitman, Webb Pierce, Lefty Frizzell, George Jones, Floyd Kramer, Tex Ritter. They've all been here. Tillman Franks remembers quite a few of them. And this is how Hank Williams Jr. tells the story of this cradle of the stars. Well, if the Opry was the promised land for country musicians on their way up, then the Louisiana Hayride was heaven's gate. They flocked to it, carrying guitars, fiddles, and songs, looking to make some money and a name for themselves, hoping for that one big hit that might mean a recording contract and the move to Nashville. The Hayride had a healthy respect for its older cousin, but the Louisiana show never advertised itself as a stepping stone to the Opry. It had its own reputation, and that was enough to keep its Saturday night roster filled. The Hayride was a steady job, a rare piece of good fortune for anybody trying to make a living playing music. The Hayride had it all gospel, live bands, comedy, men singers, and girls. But it had something else that made it stand out, made it different from the other barn dance radio shows, a certain spirit that had a lot to do with its success. The show experimented with drums, singing styles, fancy guitar licks, and honky-tonk. It was daring, and it got away with it. KWKH went on the air in 1925. Its signal reached most of East Texas, Southern Arkansas, and Northwest Louisiana. Station owner W.K. Henderson learned right off that folks in his rural neighborhood had at least one thing in common. They liked the music they understood. So he gave his listeners country, and his commercial sponsors loved him for it. How many business did you eat this morning? Early morning country music shows got to be so popular on KWKH that the station added on a live Saturday night show. It wound up being a dress rehearsal for the Hayride. It was plenty tough. It was practically, you, you almost starved. It was hard to make a living. It was, uh, it wasn't, that they looked down on music then. They called it hillbilly music. And uh, it wasn't recognized as really a, a the force it was, because they figured like there was really uh, real poor people and uh, sorry people. That, that that was the impression that they had. It was the, the type of people who were in it, and it was the, the image that we had to the public wasn't good back then. Hey, good cooking. What you got cooking? Hey, good cooking. 
when Hank come in there and got such a tremendous impact, he began to get lots of the people that like other kinds of music. When he hit so big, like the people that was raised and would, would admit that they like country music, you'd see them down at the right on Saturday night, but it, it was Hank Williams, and it, it really did. I, I would say that, that that was the impact that began to make it a national recognized show. If my daddy changed the show, well, the hayride changed Hank Williams, too. There, if you could tell people Elvis Presley walked these very steps. He really did. This is it. This is where he first got national recognition. Yeah. When they first recognized that he could be a supercar, happened on this stage, mm -hmm. right out there in the center. When he hit that guitar, that's all right, Mama, and the roof come in, that's when he broke. The floorboards of the hayride are ringing again, this time with the sound of the community cashing in. In 